Let's say for the sake of discussion that you are the boss of all of Land Rover and you just got done reinventing your company's icon. What would be the to-do list going forward? First, considering the dumpster fire that has been the past three years, probably getting them out of the factory would be a good idea. Then second, of course, adding more power. And third, there always has to be a third. Oh yes, make a bigger one. Okay, so first things first, how would you go about increasing the size of your Defender 110, the four-door? Option A would be to increase the wheelbase. That is the usable space in between the wheels where you package a lot of people and a lot of dogs. Doing so would make the vehicle more functional, but that is the most expensive way to do it. Which brings us to option B, and that is to graft on more metal from behind the rear axle, thus increasing the length of the vehicle. How much? 14 inches. To be pedantic, 13.38 inches, and we really gain two things there. Number one, we increase the length of the vehicle without breaking the budget, and number two, we change the mission of the vehicle because now you have space to package a functional third row. And that brings us to the obvious marketing discussion of what do we call this new creation? We can't call it the 110 because it has the same wheelbase, which is nine inches longer than 110. Oh yeah, I forgot. We don't name defenders after wheelbase any longer. So in this case, how about 211, which is the length of the vehicle? Now nah, that would be confusing. Let's call it the 130. I don't know where it came from, but 130 will stick. Uh, then what engine shall we put in this vehicle? Being it's gonna be bigger and most likely heavier, we should probably ditch the four cylinder and just stick with a mild hybrid six cylinder and have two different options. One with and one without the electric boost considering we have that mild hybrid system in there. Which brings us to the performance figures, really not the strong suit of something like this. If you remember on the Defender 110, that had a zero to 60 with the same almost 400 horsepower propulsion system of 5.8 seconds, no slouch. This one, considering its size, 6.3 seconds. Then there's the fuel economy. Not great. 17, 21, 19 combined. So the Defender 110 was already not lightweight, but this at 5,570 pounds, or depending on express your weights and measures, 2,526 kilograms, 405 pounds more than that 110. That is a point we're going to hit on hard in a couple of areas in this experiment today. With that. Okay. Oh, wakes up a little bit there. It delivers power the same way as the 110 because it's the same engine. But there's more of a delay there. You can definitely feel a difference in that additional weight. It's not as immediate in the way it delivers power, but really... This is not the best example or use case of the 130. I would argue it driving it around town, that's what I did to get it from the hangar up to here. And really that's what most people are gonna do with this thing. It doesn't come across as a slouch. It actually has enough power around town to the point where I would say, this is just fine. It's just under really like hard load. If one wants to drive it aggressively, dart in our traffic, kind of like a madman, that's where you definitely notice the 405 pounds. Maybe even in some passing scenarios, like 30 to 50, but I noticed 50 to 70, you don't really get the issue. Then there are the driving dynamics, and I would argue more importantly, the ride quality here. And once you get behind the wheel, the first thing you notice is it's a Defender 110. It drives like a Defender 110. It feels like a Defender 110. You really don't notice the extra 13 inches back there in terms of ride quality and driving dynamics. Even pushing it aggressively here, which most people are not going to do, the air ride setup that comes fitted as standard and very similar to the one we've experienced in the Defender 110 works beautifully here in managing the weight of the vehicle. Now, of course, there is going to be a certain limit there of how much you can push. This isn't designed to be an SVR, but for carting the Rugrats around, it's a stunning ride quality where I do have to point something out. I was at the Chicago Auto Show and I got to see my friend Jill Simonello. You've seen her on the show here before. She's at uh, pickuptrucksuvtalk.com and she had a Lincoln Navigator that week. 
And of course, I took the opportunity to have her cart me around and have her drive me to O'Hare in that vehicle. And I sat in the back. And that's a bigger vehicle than this in terms of wheelbase. That's such a choppy ride. It's noticeably bad in terms of ride quality. Here's a vehicle that frankly shouldn't be as good. And this, I would argue, delivers a more supple ride than a Navigator. So I'm gonna preface this whole exercise by saying, I love my job, really, I do. But this part, I loathe. So let's get it out of the way. Uh, getting into that third row, not easy. Uh, the only way to really do it, as so far I could see, is you have this release here and you gotta make sure that headrest is folded down and that folds this sort of flat, which means one has to climb over this second row to get to that third row, damn good thing I ran this morning, so let me do this here and fold my legs into some sort of origami while I sit in the back. And that brings us to a third row that is surprisingly not a torture chamber. Believe it or not, I have some knee room, a six footer behind the second row, uh, storage for my feet. That is a completely different question. Uh, and then another surprise is the width of the seat. You could put three people across here, not three six-footers, but three like teenagers or sort of small people. It's more than babies that can fit back here. Uh, then there is a second sunroof that has its own sunshade. And then there is something that I'm kind of sandbagging you on. This does have a track to move the seat, but it really doesn't change how you get in and out. I mean, look at that kind of space there. I think climbing over it is kind of easier. Of course, we have to retain the very cool right side hinged rear door, which reveals three storage options behind the third seat. That's about 14 cubic feet of storage behind the second row, meaning fold these about 43.5 cubic feet of storage. And then both of these rows folded 80.9 cubic feet of storage. Putting all of that aside, there's only two things I can complain about in the transition from 110 to 130. One is the nannies, all of the safety doodads. They're a bit more intrusive here, at least I notice them more in the 130 than in the 110, probably because of the weight. And then number two, the steering. I feel like I'm steering something that is longer. I can feel the extra length in the vehicle when I push it a bit more aggressively. Maybe it's the weight, perhaps it's the fact that the pendulum has shifted because you have more weight behind the rear axle. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game, Mind the Options Game, with today's contestant, the longest defender on offer, the Defender 130 for a base price of $78,300. Now that brings about an obvious question. How much is the cheapest Defender, meaning the shortest one? That's a little over 50 grand. Then there's this one being the SE, so it's not really the cheapest 130 on offer. That would be $68,000. Uh, then we have this stunning color of Sedona Red, a burgundy, which we do not have to pay extra for. Then there's the advanced off-road capability package. That's the terrain response to some other bits that enhance the off-roading. It's an almost $80,000 Land Rover. So where do you get off charging me an extra $750 to make the vehicle that I bought because it's off-road make it more off-road? Anyway, fix that. Let's press on to the premium upgrade interior package, which is pretty important. It's the 18-way heated and cooled front seats the extended leather, huge deal there, and the electrically adjustable steering wheel, that is an additional $1,700. Then we press on to the climate pack. That's heating elements for the washer jets on the headlights, as well as the windshield wipers, an additional $700. The wheels, 20 inch wheels are fitted as standard, but to make them look like that, that is an additional $1,300. Then the black contrast roof, which works incredibly well with this design, I'd say well worth the $1,000. Then we have to head back inside the vehicle for the ebony leather interior. Not the color I would choose, so I wouldn't pay the extra $750 for it. Then of course, it's a Land Rover, so we need a tow hitch. That's an additional $700. Why is it optional? An $80,000 Land Rover. Then the four zone HVAC system, that is $400. Then the solar attenuating windshield. 
300 bucks, again, on an $80,000 car. Then the only other thing we add is the destination and handling from, excuse the pronunciation because I always butcher it in these episodes, Nitra or Nitra Slovakia, $1,475, which brings us to a total retail price of $87,375. So I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but you and I have now driven three or four of these new Defenders. And the thing that stands out clearly is the design, but we've seen a couple of different ones in terms of color and trim, and it transforms the look of the vehicle. Like if you remember that 90 V8, it just looks sinister in all the black, granted not the color I would want. But that first one we got in Pangea green with the sort of odd interior, both in color and in terms of tactile feel, that showed the bounds of what the designers were going for with this vehicle. But now with the 130, they've introduced more trim choices, which is really the strong point of this vehicle. Like I would daily this, I would own a vehicle like this for no other reason than the design and the way I can customize it. Imagine this with like a cognac interior and then you could have two-tone leather or do a wood finish in the higher end trims. Okay, so all of that is lovely, but what am I trying to say here? Well, if one is serious about a Defender 90, a 110, a 130, they're going to A, have to wait for the vehicle because even now, as supply chains are catching up, these guys, they don't have enough parts to build these things, so you're gonna have to wait, which turns into B, take advantage of the opportunity. This is one of these vehicles, like a Mini, or really like a Porsche, where it can be completely customized, especially on the inside, and so take advantage of the fact that you have to wait because number one, when they finally catch up on production, everyone in fancy neighborhoods are gonna have these vehicles, but why not make yours stand out to the point where people will get into it and they open a the door and they're like, oh my God, that's the coolest interior I've ever seen, which gets us to really the important part. Let's say one owns it three years, four years, five years. By making it your own, making it special, that's the kind of thing that keeps you excited about it after many years of ownership. Okay, so what have we learned today? Well, if one likes the Defender 110, they are going to love this, especially if one has to shoehorn more people or dogs into the back. Now, there's a couple of things that are good and a couple of things that are bad. Like for example, there's some details I didn't show you, some playfulness with things like the fuse box cover in the rear. It looks like a toolkit from a spaceship. And then there's the overall look of the vehicle. I don't think it's as attractive with more metal hanging off the ass end. The proportions are a little bit off for me, but it doesn't take away from the overall design. So that's kind of a push, which brings us to the wish list. And here, yeah, of course, I gotta ask, hey, let's have the V8. But put that aside, in all seriousness, who is going to have a three row with a V8? I don't think that's realistic. But with the extra metal back there, how about a four wheel steering system to tighten up the steering with the longer vehicle? But I'm just one man, and this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys to apply in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All Word, Moto Man TV All Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, if you got value out of this episode, I would greatly appreciate you sharing these episodes with all your friends on your socials. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.